Hi folks, welcome back to Physics with Captain Rod. Uh, the purpose of this video is to demonstrate uh, how to use Kirchhoff's laws and equivalent resistance to you know, simplify circuits down and solve circuit problems. So in this particular example I've set up this uh, kind of weird looking circuit that's, got, that's driven by this 24 volt battery but also has a 5 volt battery here and you know we got this 10 ohm resistor, a 20, a 15, a 10 all uh, arranged over here like so. What we're going to try to calculate here is the potential difference between these two points A and B. Before we move on as to actually working the problem, some important circuit things we need to know about. Well, let's talk currents. Every individual branch will have a current. So we're going to have a current in this branch right here. That current's going to be good really up to this point. Uh, the reason there's not gonna, there's not going to be any current change here because there's no closed loop here. You have to have a closed loop to have current. And because these are not actually connected, there's not going to be any current in this branch. Therefore, that current, that current, the first one is good right across there up to that point. I'm going to give that current a name. Whoops. I'm going to go back and change color to black. I'm going to give that current a name. Call it I1. All right. Next current. We're going to have a current in this region. I'm going to call that current I2. We're going to have a current through this resistor here. I'm going to call that I3. We're going to have a current through this resistor in this branch right here. I'm going to call that one I4. I'm doing the current directions based on the polarity of the battery, assuming uh, positive charge carriers. Now there's actually a couple little branches I didn't consider here. Let me talk about those. Here's a little branch that I kind of ignored. There's a current there. It's going to end up equaling the sum of I, the one I called I4 and I3. There's no voltage drop across there. There's no resistor. That current's not going to come into play. I'm just going to ignore it. It's not one that we need. Same thing here. There's a current right here, which is going to equal the sum of, looking at this, it's going to be I2 plus um, I3. It's not a current we're going to need because there's no voltage drop there, so I'm just going to ignore it. I'm going to go back and do one little change here. This is a little hard. This kind of looks like a 410 here. I'm going to kind of separate this I4 and that 10 ohms a little better. And then we'll move on. All right, that was an I4. All right, next thing. Let's, you know, this question is specifically about potential differences. So I'm going to go ahead and start color coding my potentials. Taking note, the highest potential in the problem is this one. So I'm going to color code that red. That potential is good up to this point, but there is going to be a drop across that resistor. Next one. Since we have a drop here, we're going to have a different potential. That potential will be the same up to there again because that's all conducting material. Same potential, same potential. Now let's talk about this little branch. This is conducting material until we hit the resistor. Now, by Ohm's law, the voltage across a resistor is equal to IR, but there can be no I in that branch. And the reason it's not a closed loop here, you know, the charge carriers, when they get to the end here, they have to have somewhere to go, and they don't. So it, it's a lot like in a hose, uh, I've had a cap on the end of it or something. We're going to have no current in this branch, and therefore no voltage drop across that resistor. So here, I can actually color code that orange right across that because there's no current. Then we're going to get a change in voltage here. Uh, we're going to go up by 5 volts, so that is going to be, in fact, a different voltage. I'm going to go ahead and color that one yellow. Right, and, and then we're going to get voltage drops across each of these resistors. This is all going to be one color. I'm going to go ahead and just leave that black. Now, as far as what we're trying to find, we're trying to find the potential difference between A and B. And just for kicks, I don't do it often, but I'm going to actually set a datum in this problem. You can you can define a zero potential energy or a zero potential anywhere you want. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and put a ground here. 
you don't have to do this in this problem. I'm just doing it just because I feel like it. And what this does is we're setting that potential to zero. We are saying that that potential is zero. So potential B is zero. So to get the difference between A and B, all we have to do now is find potential A. Now as I kind of keep track, like from B to A, if I, you know, imagine walking over there. Here I would jump up by 24 volts. Here I'm going to drop by some sort of potential. We're going to need the current I1 here. As we move over here, there's no change in potential across this resistor. And then when I go from here to here, I'm going to go up by 5 volts. So we have two of the three things we need to get potential A. We know the 24 volts, we know the 5 volts. What we need is this current here. We need the current I1 to solve this, to answer this question. So we're going to go ahead now and start working on how to get it. These guys right here, notice that it's orange to black, orange to black, orange to black. That means that they are in parallel. So we can calculate an equivalent resistance for that. So we got 1 over R equivalent is going to equal 1 over 20 ohms plus 1 over 15 ohms plus 1 over 10 ohms. When you calculate equi equivalent resistance, your value should come in less than, in, than the least resistor there. So I should get something less than 10 out of this. So we got 1 divided by 20 plus 1 divided by 15 plus 1 divided by 10. And then invert it. OK, whoops. Come on. One, try that again here. Divide by 20 plus 1 divided by 15, plus 1 divided by 10. OK. And I get 4.63 uh, ohms out of that for the equivalent resistance here. 4.63. Ohms. So now what I'll do is redraw the circuit. So we've got our 24 volt battery here. We've got our 10 ohm resistor. We've got a single resistor here of 4.63 ohms. In place of this parallel combination, here's the point B. We've got that 5 ohm resistor, but no current. Got that 5 volt battery. There's point A. Take a look at that. Make sure I did that right. 10, 5. This is the 5 ohm resistor, 4.63. Yeah, I think we're good. I'm going to go ahead now and color code this one. Why not? So our red potential in this problem is this one. And then our orange and then yellow and then black. There, I think I'm done. Okay. Now currents. All right, so we got the current I1. I'll go ahead and put the ground in too, why not? All right, we called that zero potential. The current I1 in this picture is this way. And the nice thing is, in my new picture, there is no other current. I1 is good along this path everywhere. And there are no currents here or here because it's not a closed loop. You can only have currents in closed loops. So this problem only has one current. I'm going to go ahead now and use Kirchhoff's Law to solve this. So starting right here, I'm going to go around clockwise and write a uh, Kirchhoff's Law equation for it. So, you know, I always imagine a, a little bug walking, you know, like a little ant or something, walking the circuit, do 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 and here the ant jumps across. It goes up in potential by 24 volts, so the first term is plus 24 volts. All right, our little ant, do 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 Now here our ant is going to change in potential, red to orange, by an amount I R, I1 times 10. So I'm going to put minus 10 I1 there, right? I R. It's a drop in potential because the current direction is this way. Current always goes from higher to lower potential, right? Then our ladybug keeps walking, walking, walking. Now, when our ladybug goes across this resistor, there's going to be another drop in potential by an amount I R. So that's going to be minus 4.63 
uh, times I1. I should put NCU for note consistent units. Oops. CU. Okay. So getting back to our equation here. We are now at the black potential, walking around back to where we started, so this sum equals zero. So what we can do now is we can solve this for I1. Go ahead and do that. And what we would have is we're going to have 24 divided by 14.63. And I get about 1.64 amps out of that. Therefore, the voltage across here is I1R, that's 16.4 volts. Now, what, you know, one thing I could have done is in this term here, I could have just put this voltage across R, left it as an unknown, and solved for it, and would have gotten 16.4. It's just fairly standard, I think, in most problems. Currents are what we're looking for, and then we use them to calculate whatever we need, voltages or power. So I went ahead and found the current. So we've really got the problem solved as far as what we need. If I wanted to, I could go back to this original picture and start solving other currents. Um, actually, let me, get, let me get the question answered here and talk about all the things we could do, I guess, later. So to answer the question, we can actually use either of these two pictures now. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the original picture. So when I'm, when I'm calculating potential differences, I usually start with this. You know, whatever you start with, plus all the changes equals whatever you finish at. So I'm, if we're here, we're starting at potential B, whatever that is. Well, in this case, I forced it to zero. That's OK. I, so I could put zero here, but I'm going to go ahead and just call it potential B. And now I'm just going to just kind of mathematically walk over to A through the circuit, keeping track of all the pluses and minuses. So I'm imagining my little ladybug here. Do -do 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 When that ladybug goes to here, the ladybug's going to go up by 24 volts in potential. Then the ladybug walks here, crosses this resistor. The ladybug there is going to drop by an amount IR. Now I've already calculated the IR. That's going to be a drop by 16.4 volts across that resistor. Our ladybug is now at the orange potential. Our ladybug now walks down to here. There's no change of potential across that resistor because there's no current through it. And that's because it's an open circuit here. And then our ladybug jumps to the yellow, which is going to be up 5 volts. And now our ladybug is at potential A. So I would put equals potential A. So potential A minus potential B is equal to this by time you know by time you move the B over. 24 I'm gonna go ahead and just do this quick. 24 minus 16.4 plus 5. And what I get is positive 12.6 volts. That's the difference in potential between A and B. That numerical value is good regardless of whether I put a datum here or not. Now, with the datum, what I said is, all right, if I set potential B to zero, then potential A would equal 12.6 volts. So this is something we could write out because if we put a datum there. If we don't put a datum there, or a zero or a ground, we just leave it like this, difference in potential between them. 12.6 uh, volts. So hopefully this demonstrated how to do that, calculate the potential difference. Let me go back now and talk about all the things we could do with this circuit. Right now, the original circuit, all we have calculated is I1, but it would be pretty easy to calculate all the other currents because notice if I did this path right here, and I think I'll go ahead and write that equation out just for kicks. If I write out the equation for that path, Oops, let me get rid of the path there, right? But keep in mind the path I'm doing. It would be 24 volts, right? And I'm starting here. Minus 10 I1, keeping in one, keeping in mind that I1 is known. Minus 20 I2 when we go across here, and then we're back to where we started, equals zero. Keep in mind in this equation, I1 is a known value, so we could calculate I2 from that. I'm not going to bother doing that because the video is getting a little long, but let me just talk about you know what the other paths look like. We could then write an equation. Once we have I2, we could either do that loop to get I3, and then you know this one to get I4, 
Or we could have went back to the original and did a loop maybe something like this to get I3. Or this to get I4. Any one of those loops, you know, any combination of them would have solved the rest of that problem. I'm not going to bother doing it because, again, the video is at 15 minutes. I think it's probably long enough for now. But um, And the purpose was just to get the potential difference between A and B or yellow to black. That's been done. So hopefully this video demonstrated how to, again, use equivalent resistance to simplify a circuit down. How to use Kirchhoff's law here to write an equation to solve it. Pretty simple. And then how to find the potential difference between two points. Have a great day.